I feel like it's setting, but it's not. Tips on how to make sure your tile doesn't fall off the wall. Marking diagonals, cutting a sliver, installing a shelf, and more useful tips. Okay, so this one stud is sticking out. All the other ones are good. So I'm gonna plane it down to get it. So See it from there. See this? Oh, up here it's good. It's good up here. And yeah, it's good at the bottom. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So one of the most important things you need when you're installing tile is to have a flat substrate. So wood framing is often not conducive to getting flat walls. So a lot of times you have to make adjustments to the framing by either shimming them out or planing them down or wet shimming depending on the substrate you're using. So in this case, I have one stud that is out of plane. All the other studs on all three walls are in good condition. So I'm just showing you how to take care of one stud when it's the minimal adjustments that you need that will quickly take care of the problem and get you a flat wall. So I'm just using a power planer here uh, to make a quick work of it. So what you want to do is shave off a little bit at a time, depending on how far the stud is out, and then put your level across several studs and see if all the studs are touching and you just keep on planing it down where it needs to be planed down until all the studs touch and you get uh, no wobble or no no rocking across any of the studs uh, in this case i had just the one stud in the middle that was bowed from about a foot from the top to about a foot from the bottom and just planing it down quickly took care of it and now then when I put my board up I had perfectly flat walls so this is a quick and easy solution when you have one or two studs that are sticking out and you just need to shave them down a bit to get a flat wall. So what does keying or burning or priming the substrate mean? It means that you use the flat side of your trowel and you skim just a very, very thin coat of thin set onto your substrate before you set your tile. That, now, a lot, of, a lot of tile guys, they like to trowel the back of the tile and then set the tile on the wall. And for whatever reason, I do it a lot of times. Sometimes when you got a lot of holes, you got a lot of cuts or whatever, you like to cut the back and burn the trowel the back of the tile and then set it on your wall. But before you do that, it's very important to burn in your thin set or key in your thin set. That means getting the back of the trowel and flat troweling it and just pressing the thin set into the substrate so that you get a good transfer of thin set. So what happens if you don't do that? So Depending on the substrate, you can never really tell. Um, 
you might not get a very good transfer. It might feel like it's setting, but it's not. So I'm going to demonstrate that right here. So it's a clean, clean area here. I'll put my tile on. I'm going to press it. And then I'm going to pull it off. See that? Hardly any transfer. Now, if I do the exact same thing, and burn it in. So I'm not, I'm not moving back and forth, I'm just pressing it in the same time. And then I just press that in there. And then I pull it off. Watch the difference. Number one, it's a lot harder to pull off. And then you see the transfer that you get? You get excellent transfer. So that's why you always wanna key your substrate. If you like to notch the back of your trowel, the back of your tile instead of notching the wall that's fine just make sure you burn your substrate in before you uh, set your tile so that you know you're gonna get some, it's gonna stick so just keep that in mind when you're installing your tile and you want to notch the back of the tile could be just one cut that you're doing it could be be the whole job uh, I, I use that technique very often because sometimes you might have some cuts or whatever and it doesn't make sense to not uh, to, to spread thin set on the wall, but you make sure you burn it in first. Um, I'm going to point to another video in the cards and in the end screens, which gives another demonstration of just thin set. I drop a couple of gloves of thin set onto a piece of curdy board. In that case, that's being being flat troweled, and on a, and then just a pristine uh, on the other side is a pristine uh, curdy board and that hadn't been touched and I just drop the blobs on there. I don't press it in, I don't do anything, just a couple of blobs and then I let it dry and then I pull them off the next day and you'll see what a difference keying the substrate makes. Drop it on. See that's coming off in a million. See how this one comes off. So very important. Make sure you key in your substrate. So when you have to set mosaic tile in a tight place like the back of a niche or something like that, sometimes it makes more sense to first install the that mosaic tile onto a sheet membrane like a curdy membrane or some other waterproof membrane or even a piece of foam board. And then let it dry a couple of days so it firms up. Then you can cut that sheet or that piece of foam board as a panel and install it as a single tile in the back of the niche so you don't have little pieces of tile falling off so you set that mosaic tile into the niche or that tight spot as a single tile don't forget to like subscribe and hit that notification bell cutting a u shape out of a piece of tile can be a pain in the ear if you don't know this trick that works for most tiles here i'm scoring the bottom of the u with my snap cutter so this will work for most porcelain tiles and most ceramic tiles it's worth a shot so i scored that bottom line now i'm going to bring it over to my wet saw and cut the connecting lines all the way down to that score just the two cuts on the two sides don't have to do any more than that. Usually when you're cutting a U, you usually have to do multiple lines or do a plunge cut to connect the bottom line and get that piece out. This way, you cut those two lines. You give a, that piece a quick tap with your nips and it falls right out and you get your U cut very quickly. So this next tip is just setting the tile in a niche. So you know, the one thing that I like to do is use some sh little wedges and uh, blue tape to hold everything in place so nothing moves and make sure that the bottom shelf or any shelf in the niche is tilted towards the drain. 
you always want to pitch your shells so the water flows out and away and not to the back of the niche. So the top shelf is just two pieces of marble cut to the correct size and then stuck together with some Cody fix and then the pencil is also stuck to the end of the marble with Cody fix. This is the these this Cody fix works very well to stick these things together. You just want to make sure that everything dries before you set it. So for this step, I'm going to make a template to mark my diagonals. So I am actually going to show you how I do it with this uh, in this little tip, but I am also going to link a video that, that gives a complete explanation on how to mark tiles on a diagonals using a template to get exact cuts uh, very easily. Okay, so this is my wet saw. So if you try and cut that sliver on this tray the way it is, when you get down to the end where it's really thin, you're gonna have a problem because it's just gonna it's just gonna break off every time. So to avoid that, 
you have to put something solid under here and adjust the height of the blade. So that's what I'm going to show you what I, how to do it. So on here, you need to have support. Now this is what I actually use. So. Just hide the blade. I have two new pieces to show you guys. The height of the blade, so it just goes just below the surface of your board. This could be a piece of um, wood, but preferably a piece of, of curly board or something. A foam board will work best. So, anyway, you just adjust it so it's just below, so it just cuts into it. Cut a sliver by my pencil, something like this. I'm not actually measuring this one, I'm just showing you a demonstration of it. So come down to zero. So to do that, on here to hold this from chipping and then I'm gonna put this on the other one on this side just to hold it hold this in place from so it doesn't fall off when I get to the end To nothing. If I try to do this without the board underneath, even if I brace it, it's probably not going to work. I might have a chance because I'm holding it together, but it's probably not going to work. With the board under it, you got a much better chance of cutting that. So I'm going to show you a little trick that uh, a friend of mine showed me. I was on a job one day helping him do a kitchen floor, and we had to transition from a porcelain tile to a hardwood floor. And when we transitioned, we had to make sure that we were perfectly even from the hardwood floor to the to the tile floor. And a lot of times when you got big tiles, that's kind of difficult to do because you're going to get some, a little bit of variation. Uh, we were using a leveling system. In fact, we're using the same leveling system I'm using here. And he came up with this idea that makes it easy to get the tile exactly even with uh, the hardwood floor. So you, when you're transitioning from your Grimmie tile to the hardwood floor, it's going to be perfect every time. And of course you have to make sure that you prep the floor correctly and you've got the, the floor at the level it's supposed to be. You can't have your, your, your tile underlayment half an inch lower than your hardwood floor. It has to be at the right height. It's just that last little tweak where you get the tile exactly perfect where it needs to be so you can uh, get a perfect transition. And I'll show you how we did that. Okay, so you got your tile. And you got to transition from the tile to your hardwood. Right now, I'm just below the height of the hardwood, and I need to, this to be perfect when I'm done. 
So, you know, I can push it down, I can move it around, I can set the tile, and then leave it and hope that it doesn't move, or I can lock it in place. And how do you say, how do you lock it in place? Well, what you do is you use a leveling system like you would normally use, but you have to make room for the clip to go in. So I've already done, I've already done one, two, three, four. But I'm just gonna do another one just to show you uh, how how I how I did it. So I'm gonna just do another one right here. So just get an oscillating tool and just cut into it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. See if you can make a little bit wider. Get a piece of cardboard, and now you're in a different plane. Where is it? Right here. And now you're exactly even with the hardwood. Okay, just to show you how good this is, this is the end result. Okay, so uh, you're doing a floor, and you're doing a running bond, or you're gonna set the tile uh, on a third running bond, you know, third staggered, or a quarter, whatever. So you need to divide your tile into halves, quarters, thirds, to know what the dimension is to put where you've got to put your 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 stagger. Now this, you know, you can measure it and figure out what the math is. And because we have uh, feet and inches in the United States, uh, figuring the exact fraction uh, can be a pain in the ear. But anyway, I'm going to show you a method that you can use that will give you that uh, division of that tile to any. Um, fraction you want you could do it in half and thirds and quarters and whatever whatever you want without ha having to figure out what the the size is for the tile on your tape measure and this is how you do it so this tile is 23 and 5 eighths so to figure what the half that tile is, you've got to figure out what the half of 23 and 5 eighths is. And I can do that, not a big deal. But why do that when I can do it the easy way? So instead of trying to figure out what the half of 23 and 5 eighths is, I am going to put my the corner of my tape exactly. I'm putting the corner of my tape exactly in this corner here. 
And then I'm gonna get find 24. Put on here. I find 24 inches. And check my tape, make sure that I'm on that corner. Find 24. So half of 24 is 12. So I'm gonna mark that at 12. And you'll find that that's exact center. So we got 11 and uh, 11 and 13 sixteenths. And over here we have 11 and 13 16. So that's exactly how to do to do a third, the same thing. Put exactly. Put your tape exactly on the corner over here, and then you go to 24 over here, exactly 24 inches. So because I'm I have on this corner here, and I'm on 24 here, I always measure from this side. So a third would be eight and 16 and a quarter would be six would be six just put a little mark there 12 and six so now I have I have third and quarters mark, so that's seven and seven sixteenths. That's seven and seven sixteenths. I mean, seven and seven eighths. Yeah, seven and seven eighths. Seven and seven eighths. And seven and seven eighths. So that's your third. Same with the quarter. That's going to be. All quarters. You can measure it if you want. So it doesn't matter how big the tile is. If you've got a 36 inch tile, you go to the 36 inch mark. I mean, these tiles are usually measured in when they're manufactured to uh, metric sizes. So you can do it with any tile. It could be a uh, 48 inch tile, it could be a 36 inch tile, it could be a 12 inch tile, anything you want. So you can use this, this method. And you can figure out what the tile is exactly. It doesn't matter what size it is. The tile could be 23 and, uh, and 5, 5 eighths, or it could be 7 eighths, or it could be 15, 30 seconds, or whatever it may be. You don't have to measure anything. You don't have to figure out what the, uh, the fraction of half a tile is. Just use this method real quick, real easy. Uh, you find what your, your half is, your third, your quarter, whatever, whatever size you need, and uh, it's right every time.